In the Christian diet world, she was a rock star. To others, though, she was a cult leader. Well, now the son of Brentwood's Gwen Shamblin is talking about the woman he saw. Thanks for being with us tonight at 6. I'm Rory Johnson. And I'm Carrie Sharp. In his first interview ever, Michael Champlin says while some in her church want to put his late mother on a pedestal, it's important to see her as she really was. He shared his story in an exclusive interview with News Channel 5 Chief Investigative Reporter Phil Williams. Phil, this interview has a lot of people talking. Absolutely. The first part of our interview aired late last night after the Super Bowl, and people have been watching it all throughout the day online. Michael Shamblin, who's now trying to recreate himself professionally as Michael S. Black, says his mother hurt a lot of people, including him. This is the true church. How does one begin to process the feelings of betrayal by a religious leader? Welcome, seekers, to the Remnant Fellowship Church. Especially when that religious leader is also family. And people wonder, how do people buy into cults, or how do they buy into these churches or charismatic leaders? It was my mother, and I went along with everything. Not only did Michael Shamblin go along with it, so this world he and his sister became part of Gwen Shamblin's Remnant Fellowship show. Michael brought the musical talent. I remember her singing every song that she sang was to God. Every song was a love song to God. His sister Elizabeth brought the eloquence. Looking back on it, we were we were used. Me and my sister were used, and she would tell us this stuff like. She used us to, to pull people into the remnant because she would use us as an example. Look how loyal and good my kids are. So when Gwen Shamblin was killed in a plane crash three years ago, along with other remnant leaders, Michael Shamblin says he did not feel he had lost a mother. That had happened years before. When was the last time you felt like she was your mother? Golly. I'm having to go back a long ways. A lot of stuff has happened. Um, Do you remember the last time you told her that you loved her? Genuinely? Genuinely. No. Um, it would have been like college. Michael says to really see the woman who was his mother, you have to go back in time. I think there was a time, especially when we lived in Memphis in the early days, there was a more humble Gwen Shamblin at one point. I would definitely say that. And what changed? She, she started getting the, the praise from people. She started getting lifted up. I've lost 196 pounds. Her Way Down Workshop, the Christian diet program that she and husband David had created, began sweeping the nation. It's Tony Bennett tomorrow night. Our guest tonight is Gwen Shamblin. She is founder of the Way Down Workshop and author of The Way Down Diet. Just like so commonly happens, the ground started falling lower beneath her high heels. I think it changed and all of a sudden it became the claps and the praise. It was for her and it became something of a, I think people can get addicted to that. America is in trouble here. We've got just as much divorce inside the uh, church is out. The church has morphed into the world. When I first met Shamblin in 2001, she was in the process of creating her own church, telling employees of her Way Down workshop they could either join Remnant Fellowship or find new jobs, even chastising me for daring to question her actions. So to accuse me of being deceptive is a very strong language because I've been led by God to do this. And watch what happened as she gave us a tour right in front of her then 20-year-old son. But this is our sound studio. My son cuts Christian music here. In fact, he's over at Sound Kitchen right now doing that. That was a big day for us. I'm not sure they knew what was about to happen. But she's talking about you like you're not standing right there. Yeah, I, I was used to that. What motivated Gwen Shamblin? Praise, power. She loved the attention. She loved the spotlight. Remnant Nation, it is my prayer for you to be born again. And the spotlight was just what she found as the head of Remnant Fellowship. Some inside Remnant viewed her as a prophet. Are you a prophet? 
I don't believe I know what my gift name is. So I, I will tell you, I'm still wrestling with that. I've been told that for years. When she was asked, she never would answer that question directly. Do you have any kind of official title of the church? I'm Gwen. How did she see herself? I believe she absolutely saw herself as a prophet. I believe she saw herself as having the answer to all of life's problems. That's the reason I call her Gwen Almighty. She's going to decide whether you make it to heaven or not. It was the person portrayed in the HBO Max docuseries, The Way Down, God Greet, and the Cult of Gwen Shamblin. Were you uh, and your sister ever told that you had a special religious significance or mm -hmm. special role? Yeah. Like there was a period of time when I, there, there was so many times that I tried to get out of the church, but there was a time when I, I tried to go back and finish my college degree. Michael says the message that he could not go back to college was delivered by another remnant leader. And he had been told by Gwen to sit me down and say, you, you can't leave. You're anointed. They would use that word very commonly. Anointed. Like, anointed. Meaning? Meaning it is destined by God. It's ordained by God. It was ordained by Gwen. But then her son says his mother decided the rules did not apply to her. Gwen, over the years, she started loosening her morals that she had been preaching to other people. Because her husband David had not bought into her church, she decided he had to go. She divorced him and David Shamblin was immediately replaced when she became engaged to Remnant member and actor Joe Laura in an elaborate scene captured on church video. She goes and she changes the church doctrine on divorce. And so now all of a sudden, God has a more favorable opinion on divorce. And the, the church leaders went along with it. They went along with it. The wedding <laughs> became another Gwen Shamblin production. It was all about her. It was so about her. Someone who's claiming to be taking care of, of the church. And you're sitting there and your reaction is what? I was already upset because of the divorce with my dad. It was just yet another shocking, um, yet another shocking chapter in Gwen's life. Michael Shamblin also watched her physically morph into someone he no longer recognized. But Gwen started making herself look bizarre, and fr it was frightening. Her eyes the, were the hair started her hair, getting but taller. It was, but it became wild, was white, and her eyes became frightening, blue, scary blue. Now he wonders if anything he ever believed about his mother was true. When she used to sing this song to me, and I, at first I always thought she was just kidding. It was a funny little, I don't even know where she got it. She'd come in and go, nobody loves you but your mother, and she may be jiving too. And she'd kind of do this little hip swing, and I'm like, yeah, that's funny. And then years later, I'm like, was she kidding? Michael Shamblin shared a story with me about how he was once threatened because people feared that he would do exactly what he's doing now, going public with his story. We'll have that part of our exclusive interview that's tomorrow night at 6. Phil, this church is still up and running. That's right, and we have reached out to them to, to get their comment to this, and so far we have heard nothing from them.